Aloha all and welcome back to Let's Play Sly 2. I am Paper Mario Guy and we're going to be starting up episode 2 of Sly 2 Band of Thieves. So let's get started. A starry-eyed encounter. Sounds good. That tiger looks pretty badass. Let's get started. Another clockwork part had surfaced in India. So the boys and I loaded up the van and zeroed in on our next target. A mysterious spice lord known as Rajan. A self-made man who grew up poor on the streets of Calcutta, he started his life a crime selling illegal spices in the black market, eventually growing his small outfit to a sizable operation and earning himself a seat in the prestigious Claw Gang. He since crowned himself Lord of the Hills and while he goes to great lengths to convince others of his royalty, it's mostly to convince himself. True to form, he's holding a lavish ball in his newly purchased ancestral palace. The reason? To show off his latest acquisition, the clockwork wings. The symbol of my enemy. If you saw the wings silhouetted against the night sky, it was already too late for you, especially if your name was Cooper. Rajan believes displaying the wings will bring him prestige, and maybe they will, but they're also bringing me. So we are India bound for this next eventful episode of Sly 2, and as far as style is concerned, like, I think this might be my favorite area, like, in just in terms of aesthetics, I really like this place. Um, it's really quite nice and pleasing to the, to the face, <laughs> to the face, uh, eyeball things, <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, with a new episode and a new area, uh, there's a lot of new things that are going to be explored. Uh. With the drawbridge up, the only way across that river is on those conical rocks. Do you remember how to spire jump? What? You think I forget one of the Cooper family's greatest thief moves? Whenever I'm near pointed objects, I just need to jump and hit the circle button to perform a ninja spire landing. That's correct. Now let's First, I gotta take care of the snake. But, uh, yeah, so there's gonna be a lot more to explore. Um, but there are going to be uh, a few staple things that are going to stay constant throughout um, the story. And I know that I've talked about it a little bit, but I figure I might as well reiterate myself of what I said um, back in Dimitri's part and say that every area is gonna start with some reconnaissance. Uh, there's only one area that really is questionable whether or not it's reconnaissance or not, but I still kind of consider it uh, to be reconnaissance. Um, and of course, we're still gonna have clues. Um, we're still gonna have, you know, the 30 clues, and then once you get that, you get the, you know, you open the vault area. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of uh, similar, um, uh, um, Enemies, you know, you you saw probably as I was walking here, you saw the fact that there was a like elephant dude, and that kind of replaces the uh, bull type enemies. Um, I forget exactly what they were, but yeah, like the bull type enemies that you that Sly couldn't take out, and then you'll have you know your two smaller cronies um, that Sly can has. Uh, the Sly has so there's some variety in you know obviously the way that things look, but as far as like logistics, pretty much the same. Not a problem. There seem to be plenty of branches for me to walk on. I'll figure it out. The voice acting in this game is just such a joy to listen to. Everybody does such a great job. And there's not a single line that I feel is, like, pronounced wrong. Or, you know, said with, like, the wrong inflection. I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like the voice actors just really know their characters. And I honestly, I'll, I'll look it up. 
you know, off screen and try to find out what the uh, the voice actors' names are and see if they've been in anything else. Cause I don't know. To me, they're really talented. I really enjoy them. But what I was saying is the logistics are going to be pretty much the same. But aesthetically, everything changes, and it's just as nice, if not better, than, you know, in Dimitri's. And everything just kind of fleshes out a little bit in this particular um, area. Um, but we have our spy cam, so we can zoom in and look at stuff. Uh, but you do not want to walk out onto the balcony because you will be seen. But you can walk pretty close into it so that you can get a good look yeah see these are like the elephant guys that replace it and they're pretty hardcore so don't mess with them but let's take some pictures looks like the wings have been welded onto that statue they look heavy Getting the wings out of here will be a real challenge. An electronic winch. That could be useful. That's him. Rajat's really pulled out all the stops to impress people with this party. Maybe you should get some shots of the guests. Will do. Another Claw Gang member. Our arpeggio specializes in exotic technology. Oh, arpeggio. Oh no, don't walk away. Oh, my favorite. Jean Bisson. A member of the Claw Gang and Canadian Shipping Baron. He owns half the trains in Canada. That's the Contessa. A high-ranking prison warden for Interpol. She must be working undercover to expose Rajan's spice ring. Carmelita's here too. She must be undercover with the Contessa to help bust Rajan. Leela, another officer undercover. Watch yourself, Sly. This party is crawling with cops. That's all the photos I need. Bring them back to the safe house, and we'll start building a game plan. Stealing the clockwork wings in the middle of a crowded ballroom is going to take some serious misdirection. And the squad of undercover cops only makes things more complicated. Although, we might be able to use them to our advantage. But no matter what we do in the ballroom, sooner or later we'll need to deal with Rajan's security chopper. Murray can take it out with some of the local armaments, but he won't be able to get inside the palace until Sly lowers the drawbridge for him. So we've officially cooked up our plan, and we are now going to go off. And you can kind of see in the background that Sly is the, uh, Murray has a mission, but Sly has majority of the missions to begin with, so let's go out with him. Um, India is a pretty awesome place, and I don't want to, like, spoil anything, so I'm not going to, but, uh, Rajan is, is pretty, I'll just say Rajan is pretty badass, and, like, you don't really... You won't really know for a while why he's so badass, but he is. But, oh wow. What a badass. <laughs> no, this guy's a badass. He just breaks crates by walking into him. Um, 
So, yeah, like, I mean, I was saying that the logistics of things, you know, the, the, the format of Sly 2 pretty much stays consistent throughout the, uh, you know, the episodes. Um, but there's a nice flow of, uh, you know, just, like, showing you that you're progressing, you know, throughout the game. Because even though, like, you know, you're dealing with the same type of enemies and, you know, you're doing, um, you know, some of the similar stuff, like, subtle things that are changed are, like, you just saw when I pickpocketed that elephant guy. You know, back in the area of, um, uh, like, Dimitri's Paris, uh, you would only get silver th items and bronze items and, and these, these items that really aren't all that valuable. But already, you know, already in India, we've picked up some pieces of gold, which are obviously more valuable. And I, I really like that, um, because it just sends a nice, like, I don't know, a nice uh, change of pace. It's a nice, it's a nice change of pace. Uh, not like Dr. Eggman at the end of Sonic Generations. Um, it's so ridiculous. Time for a change of pace! And he just says that over and over again for no reason. But anyway, uh, this is, um, this is lowering the drawbridge. And this one, if you turn around... Uh, so you kind of know where you're going, what you're doing to, is Ballroom Dance Party. We're going to wait for Ballroom Dance Party until the next episode, because I'm pretty sure that takes a little while. But I'm totally down for lowering the drawbridge. I'd love to, pal, but the winch is all locked down. You know where I can find the keys? Key guards have recently taken up positions around the palace. Sneak in, pick all of their pockets, and bring the keys back to the lockdown witch. Alright, so we're gonna take a... Oh, we don't even need to. I was gonna actually gonna zoom in and see how many keys there are, but... We have five keys that we need to steal, and we're pretty, uh, you know, accustomed to pickpocketing at this point. So, that should not be a problem. Um, we're gonna go over here and pickpocket this guy first, though. Because he's all the way out here in the middle of, like, nowhere. Honestly. He's like... He's all over here, secluded by himself, with no one to help him. He's all on his own little island. And he's gonna pay for it, because we're gonna kill him. <laughs> we're gonna steal his key, and then we're gonna kill him. Which is kind of mean, but Sly really doesn't care. Sly's on a mission. Sly, to me, is like... I don't know. Sly is like... Very much like Tommy Versetti in the sense that he does what he wants, and he doesn't care who wants him to do it or who doesn't. He just does. And that's that's the other... Sly Cooper is like Ch Charlie Sheen. He only has one, you know, one mode, and that's go. And he just goes over and over again until he can't go anymore. But because Sly's always winning... He can go as long as he needs to, so... That's good for us, bad for Razan and the Claw Gang. <laughs> um... Alright. Uh, don't wanna... F uh, I'd rather fall to my death than get one of those, uh... Clue bottles. That's how I'm gonna approach the clues, um... In, like, all the... All the areas as well. Um, I'm just going to... Get them all at once, and then speed them up. Cause that's just... I don't know, to me that's just... Like, I mean, I don't know how, how long it wound up being because I haven't edited it yet, but, like, to get all of the, uh, clues in, uh, Dimitri's Paris area, um, I don't know why I keep on saying it, Dimitri's Paris, like, he owns it, but, uh, to get all, all the clues in, um, Paris, it took a solid, uh, um, a, like, 13 minutes to get everything, so, you know, it's no joke, it takes a while. And it's not really worth commentating on. Uh, I mean, I I have a good idea as to where, like, some of the items are. But I don't know where all the clues are. And that provides a problem. So, like, if I'm ever, like, struggling and trying to find one particular clue for a while, then I could just edit it out or at least speed it up so it doesn't seem like it takes forever. So there's a method to my madness, and I don't mean to, you know, speed up everything, because I, I seem to have, like, one set part or one aspect of every game that I play that I speed up and play music to, but, I don't know, to me, it's just necessary. Yep. You can use noise to lure this guard from his post. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the noise guy. 
So, yeah. Uh, thankfully, you know, they have some, uh, they add some flair to these missions. They, they spice it up just a little bit. Um, cause if you remember, you know, back when we were pickpocketing for the, uh, um, the fan keys, you know, everybody was just kind of standing around and it was really easy to get them all. But I mean, at least with this, you know, you have to be a little bit more creative and they add a, a just like a small little aspect, uh, which, you know, makes it just enough different that I can really appreciate it and I don't mind doing it again. Which I think is one of Sly's, uh, like, as a series, but especially in Sly 2, I think that's probably one of Sly's strongest aspects, is its ability to subtly change things just enough so that when you do it again, you don't really mind doing it again because you can appreciate the fact that, like, oh, at least I'm not doing the same exact thing. At least there's at least something different. And I, I don't know. Personally, I appreciate that a lot. And it just flows so well with, like, the pacing that Sly 2 has. I, I just love Sly 2. <laughs> I just can't, I can't stress it enough. I just really love Sly 2. It's a fantastic series, or a game in a fantastic series. That, honestly, I know has a bunch of love, but just, I don't think it has quite enough love as it, as it deserves, you know. It may have gotten, the, you know, the remake and everything in HD, which is good, you know. Uh, because, the... the you know, that's the whole thing about HD remakes, well, as I'm, you know, getting getting this last key, I'll go on a little bit of a tangent. You know, I know a lot of people don't like HD, or, like, have a lot of beef with HD remakes, like, you know, because people would prefer having new games as opposed to, you know, rehashing old ones, and I can definitely see where they're coming from in that sense, because, you know... The more new games, you know, the more it promotes, you know, new ideas and stuff like that. But, you know, at the same time, HD remakes and ports in general, I do have, like, a, a bit of a soft spot for. Not because, you know, not just because, like, I have nostalgias for some of the games like Sly, which gets re-released. But also because it reintroduces a series that, like, maybe not so many people had, um, known of, but also maybe not had a chance to get. And, like, GameStop recently just put a halt on, like, accepting all GameCube games, and they've done that for PS2 games as well. So you can no longer really find these older games in, um, you know, GameStop anymore. So it makes them a lot more rare. And these HD remakes give you a chance to play these old games that you don't necessarily have a chance to purchase anymore, which I really enjoy. But tangent over, the draw bridge is lowered, um, and I really enjoy that mission. Really not all that hard, and it also gives you a chance to uh, really kind of get a, a good look at majority of the area of India, like right off the get-go, which I particularly enjoy as well. You know, there... I use enjoy a lot, because I do enjoy a lot. <laughs> but uh, that just about does it for part one of episode two of Sly 2 Band of Thieves. I'm Paper Mario Guy of the Koopa Ninja Bros. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next episode.